Hi, welcome to your video tutorial on how to do a headstand. We're going to first talk about the arms, which is really the most important part of this practice is your engagement and being very careful not to put too much pressure on the top of your head. So once we get onto the mat and do this, you will first bring your hands to your biceps. This is the distance that your elbows should be in order to do this headstand. And then you're simply going to pivot out on those elbows and then interlace your hands. And that's where it's gonna be. Some people do headstand with their hands together behind their head. Uh, I find that to be a little bit more challenging and some people open their hands, they create a, more of a cradle and this cradle goes at the back of their head. If you do your hands together like this, which is great, like once you get headstand, I really recommend doing this, this practice. It's um, really strengthening and very stable, uh, but you might actually tuck that bottom pinky under so that you have a flat surface rather than that extra pinky finger, not extra pinky finger, but that pinky finger on the bottom creating um, you know, a little bit of a bump. Okay, so when you get into headstand, I want you to think about first just what it would be like to be standing on your mat in Tadasana or mountain pose. Rather than having slumpy, slouchy posture, you want to lengthen up toward the sky, correct? So you're doing the same thing when you are inverted. Your head is dead on the ground, but everything else is lengthening up to the sky. And same thing with your engagement. Rather than having a bunch of, of um, weight and, and unengagement crunching down on your neck and your head, everything is engaged and extending and pressing away. So I'm gonna show you again when we, when we get into that. But even your shoulder blades, your scapula are are engaging down and slightly together as you do this practice. And then you start to use your core. There's a lot of things going on in the back and even a little bit in the legs to help you stay stable and sturdy. So when you're first working on headstand, it is a good idea to possibly use a wall. You don't have to. And I'm gonna show you today how to use your feet one at a time and start building that strength but without ever actually falling. If you wanna use a wall, be careful, don't get too close to the wall, don't get too far from the wall. If you're too close, you're gonna go up and there's nowhere for you, to, for you to go and you kinda just bounce off and fall. And if you're too far away, if you aren't stable or sturdy enough, you risk uh, your neck you know, fall, falling and actually really injuring yourself. Um, it's much more dangerous to fall near a wall than even on your mat. So let's talk about what to do if you do fall. Tuck and roll, just go with it. Try not to jerk, try not to you know, catch yourself. That, that, that freezing might actually cause more challenges if you do fall. So if you find yourself starting to tip, have fun with it, just roll and go. That being said, if you have neck injuries or um, bulging discs, you might not want to try this practice at all. Uh, some of you have a lot of strength, but if this is um, something that, you're, that you need to build some strength to be able to do, you'll start with dolphin push-ups. It's said that once you can do 15 dolphin push-ups without struggling, that's when you are, are ready to try the headstand. So dolphin push-ups are here. You come into dolphin, inhale, dolphin plank and back up. So again, once you can do 15 of these without, you know, shaking and it being really difficult, that's when you are about ready. Okay, so let's try the actual headstand. Um, always, I'm gonna show you how to come up into the egg and I've seen students come to regular yoga classes like three times a week and it, they, they would do the egg for maybe even six weeks before they extended all the way to headstand. So once again, Hands on your, on your biceps, elbows down to the ground. Pivot out, interlace your hands. Now, your head is not going to be touching the mat. Correction, your head may be and probably will be touching the mat, but if there was a piece of paper between your head and the mat, I would be able to come over and, and pull that piece of paper out without ripping or, or tearing it and without struggle. So once again, rather than everything kind of collapsing down, you engage. So uh, he, here it is. So like if I was collapsing down, I'd have all this pressure. 
you're engaging. And see now my head, I'm engaged so much, it's, it's floating. Okay, so head here, you begin to walk your feet up until your hips are right over your, um, your shoulders. Eventually you'll bring one knee in and extend it. And then the other knee in and extend it. And again, I'm still engaging here. I'm already shaking and sweating from, from doing this. Um, and you can practice that for some weeks until you get the strength eventually. And again, you might do this at a wall for the first time. You'll bring both into the egg and breathe. Still engaging. This is where you might stay for some weeks in this egg. And again, one day you're gonna feel really steady and you'll want to extend your legs up to the sky. Once extended, dorsiflex your feet. I'm not sure if you can see it in the video. Sometimes I call it Barbie foot. Extend your, the balls of your feet up, engage your legs core is engaged. Make sure you breathe though. People hold their breath here. Ujjayi breath. Focus your eyes on one point. When you're ready to come out, you come back into the egg, make it really tight, and then as slowly as you can, release back down and take rest in a child's pose. Typically, I'd say take at least five to uh, five to ten breaths in child's pose, and see, I'm I'm totally out of breath. So that's it's a lot of work if you're doing the dolphin push-ups, if you're going to the egg, or even doing the one leg down, hugging the other one in. You're gonna you're gonna be working. Okay, so enjoy that. Uh, headstand is called the king of yoga asanas, of yoga poses. So. It's really powerful. The ancient yogi said, if you want to overcome the fear of death, all you have to do is practice headstand for four hours, and you will attain enlightenment and, uh, and not be afraid of death anymore. So there's a little yogi tip for you as well. Okay, happy practicing. Thank you for tuning in.